Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Today we are talking about lovemaking and marriage in 1871 France. Enjoy the video. Paris's Belle Epoque was a time of elegant architecture, wide boulevards, and inviting cafes. It was also an era rich in French hedonism. Though the cultural center of the world, Paris was also a wild city. Parisians who lived through the golden years of 1871 to 1914 loved to have a good time. In an era of grace and beauty, refinement and respectability, the city was also defined by its sensual decadence, debauchery, and risque practices. Parisian nightlife was as colorful as it was over the top. In districts like Montmartre, cabarets and clubs such as the Moulin Rouge and Folies Bergerac came to life, serving champagne and absinthe as a side order to scandalous, shocking entertainments. This libertine, carefree climate inspired scores of artists, writers, and musicians. The cabarets, cafes, and cathouses of Paris abetted Impressionist indulgences. Belle Epoque Paris also provided opportunities for increasingly independent young women who came to the city in droves to follow their interests and talents. They attempted to sidestep marriage and find paths to wealth and independence. These women often turned to the stage, finding work as actresses and dancers. Frequently, this work led them to become mistresses to wealthy, influential men. The French president died while getting it on with his mistress. Madame Marguerite Steinheil was one of the most scandalous women in Paris in the Belle Epoque. Considering the hedonism of the turn of the century, that's really saying something. Through her marriage to a French artist, Madame Steinheil gained entry to the upper echelons of Parisian society. In 1897, she met the 56-year-old president of France, Félix IV, and soon became his mistress. On February 16, 1899, Steinheil's servants were summoned to his private room, where they found four dead on the couch and a disheveled Steinheil straightening her clothes and hair. The scene was altogether scandalous, and rumors quickly spread that a lovemaking tryst between the two had brought about a fatal seizure. A future king of England used a specialty chair at his favorite establishment. Before he became the king of England, Edward VII spent his time waiting around for his mother, Queen Victoria, to perish. He didn't ascend to the throne until he was 59, so he spent the vast majority of his life as the Prince of Wales, next in line for the throne. While stuck in a royal waiting room, Edward decided to have a little fun. The Playboy Prince was known for his gigantic appetite for pleasure. Like many British men in the 19th century, the Prince frequented the cat houses of Belle Epoque Paris, and he did it with enthusiasm and flair. His favorite place to sheathe his royal scepter was upscale Le Chabonais, which catered to a number of high-profile clients. The Prince of Wales kept his own room there, complete with his coat of arms mounted over the bed and a tub he filled with champagne. He also kept an apartment nearby in a neighborhood that was called the Clitoris of Paris. As the prince's appetites grew larger, so did his body. He swelled to an enormous size and was known to eat as many as five meals a day. He supposedly commissioned a chair specially designed so he could enjoy the company of a woman without crushing her. French became synonymous for the industry. 
The craze for prostitution in late 19th century France created a massive human trafficking industry. While Paris had plenty of women to fill its cathouses and streets, many provincial towns didn't have enough to go around. To meet customer demand, women walked the streets of Paris or other cities offering naive young women an opportunity to work as maids in the country. They ended up in slaughterhouses, a term for cheap, factory-like cathouses. Scouting women on the street gave way to massive organizations with talent recruiting fronts. These organizations advertised a need for entertainers, dancers, performers, and other such professionals. Those who signed up were sent to places like Buenos Aires or Rio de Janeiro on contracts they didn't earn enough to buy their way out of. Some started as waitresses and eventually turned to life as a lady of the night, while others were forced straight into the industry. La Belle Otero was so beloved her breasts inspired a building in Cannes. La Belle Otero was one of the most fated courtesans in the Belle Epoque. Born in 1868 in Spain, she made a name for herself in the dance halls of France before becoming a star at the Folies Bergera, one of the most popular clubs in Paris. Her beauty attracted the attention of some of the wealthiest and most powerful men in the world, and she became the rumored lover of King Edward VII and Prince Albert of Monaco, among others. Her physique was so admired, the Carlton Hotel in Cannes is said to have modeled its cupolas on her breasts. Colette caused a riot when she kissed another woman on the Moulin Rouge's stage. One of the most colorful voices of the Belle Epoque was that of writer-actress Sidney Gabrielle Colette, better known as Colette, her pen name. After separating from her husband in 1906, Colette began a wandering career as an actress and engaged in affairs with men and women. She sometimes showed her breasts on stage. By 1907, she was having an affair with a French Marquise. When the Marquise joined Colette on stage at the Moulin Rouge and the two shared a kiss, a riot broke out. Colette carried on numerous affairs, including one with her stepson, and was eventually nominated for a Nobel Prize in Literature. Her story Gigi, which was adapted into a popular musical, is heralded as a charming portrait of the gaiety and frivolity of the Belle Epoque. Flamboyant diva Sarah Bernhard slept in a coffin and had a pet alligator. Sarah Bernhard was perhaps the foremost stage actress of the late 19th century. Born in 1844, she was an international star of both stage and screen who was well known for her larger-than-life, fabulously eccentric personality offstage. She famously kept a coffin in her bedroom, she liked to study for roles in the coffin and slept in it at least once. She also collected exotic animals. When she toured America, she supposedly purchased a pet alligator she named Oligaga. Oligaga slept in Sarah's bed, but died young from an unhealthy diet of milk and champagne. Bernhard was unconventional in all things, even her choice of stage roles. She once played Hamlet, a performance that was recorded as a silent film. The size of the industry in the city was staggering, as was the population growth. Throughout the 19th century and into pre-war 20th century, women who worked at cat houses were required to register with the police, as were those caught turning tricks on the street. In 1812, Paris had about 900 registered prostitutes. 
By 1832, the number was 3,500. By the 1850s, its estimated Paris had about 34,000. The number of individuals plying the trade in London at the time was estimated at 24,000, though London had twice the population of Paris. By the time the Belle Epoque arrived, Paris was flush with ladies of the night. According to one, admittedly hysterical, estimate, Paris had as many as 120,000 such women. Though this figure may not be accurate, it's worth noting that, between 1872 and 1911, the population of Paris exploded. The city swelled from 1,851,792 residents to 2,888,110. In this culture, a golden age of prostitution flourished. In Paris, this industry was highly structured and regulated, and those in the trade ranged from the high class, wealthy courtesan to the common streetwalker. Cat houses dotted the city, offering a wide variety of options for the discerning customer. A culture as fast and loose as this was bound to produce some scintillating stories. Thanks for watching. Do like, subscribe and comment.